located in this generic office tower in Lower Manhattan, is something that everyone from computer scientists to medical practitioners and businesses think could reinvent how we interact with computers forever. We're at Watson's Global Headquarters in New York City, where IBM is trying to redefine the relationship between man and machine. Watson is IBM's supercomputer most famous for beating two former champions in the U.S. quiz show Jeopardy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Watson. Watson is the first example of cognitive computing. Think of that really simply as computers that interact with the world pretty naturally, and they learn. And Watson learns fast. It was that speed that beat the game's toughest competitors and marked a new era of computing. Now we come to Watson who is Bram Stoker and the wager. Hello, 17,973, and a two-day total of 77,147. Named after IBM's founder, Thomas Watson, this machine has been dubbed the world's smartest computer. But IBM's investment in AI goes back decades. In 1995, the company grabbed headlines when it created Deep Blue the world's first computer to beat a human chess pro. For its part, Watson has taken years of work and countless hours of testing to develop a massive investment for IBM. The algorithms that he has for learning, we keep putting in more and more and more algorithms, and there's all different kinds of problems that he has to deal with. Then he keeps teaching himself from those, what has he learned, what's a credible source, a non-credible source, and then keeps testing the answer. And that to me is a difference, he never stops learning. Think of it as the world's most human computer. When Watson is given a question, he weighs up possible answers similar to the way humans do. The only difference? Watson can take into account billions of sources across the globe, allowing him to develop completely unique solutions. But that sort of computing power raises obvious questions. How smart can Watson get, and should we be worried? There's a lot of questions about things like artificial intelligence that are going around in the media, and I'm pretty sure that's going to stay in the realm of science fiction for the foreseeable future. But what we see right now is these tremendous opportunities to have people extend their thinking and partner with systems to, to save lives in ways they, they couldn't before. And all of our focus is on building systems that make people better. Those questions aren't unfounded. They've been raised by the likes of Stephen Hawking and Microsoft founder Bill Gates by IBM isn't slowing down. This is the potential to be more transformative than like the internet was, right? The, the internet took information we had and made it better to communicate it, to get it from one place to another. Cognitive computing is changing what we can do with information. We're able to synthesize insight and ideas and, and inspire creativity in a way that we've never been able to. One example, Chef Watson, IBM's cooking program that helps cooks create recipes they never imagined. Chef Watson here is trying to help you be the inspiration. You come up with the dish that you think is interesting. And, and Watson, because it's read all these cookbooks and it's read information about food science, it's, it's not going to give you a recipe. It's going to help you think about uh, how do you take your vision, your ideas, and maybe come up with some food pairings and things. It's going to start thinking through all the things that it's read, mm -hmm. right, more than you or I ever could, and start to say, what are the kinds of flavors and things that would come together that would make a good salmon stew? It's an interesting example, and just like in Jeopardy, it's something everyone can understand. Watson goes beyond games and food. Computer scientists and even doctors think it has the potential to dramatically change healthcare. And the idea is at the center of it, if you're really going to have individualized medicine, and it's about health and wellness, it's going to be about data. Watson for Oncology has been learning millions of articles, medical journals, and patient records to help hospitals improve care for cancer patients, all with the goal of finding personalized treatments. IBM is hoping it will transform other industries, from financial services to academia. To do that, they've recently launched a cloud platform for organizations from across the globe to explore new ways of using Watson. What's next for Watson? The future is not so much about the technology, it's about people, what it does for us. I'm really excited that I think this is gonna usher in the next era of human innovation.